What is up guys, Seveno Savage here. Today we have a very exciting day. We are going to be installing the electrical system into the van. So the electrical system is one of the most intimidating parts of any van build. I am here to prove that conspiracy to be wrong. Uh, I don't think that electrical needs to be that intimidating. There's lots of little parts and little things to consider, but they're all very simple. At the end of the day, you're just plugging wires together. Wrong. This is the outlet coming to you from after installing the electrical system. And I can tell you now that it is very dangerous. I had a couple of very close calls. Thankfully, I had no injuries, but they were only closely avoided. Um, you will see those later in this video. You should not be doing your own electrical system. The amount of power that is stored in these batteries in van systems and RVs and boats is a lot of power in general. It's used to power a lot of things. and just because that is harnessed in a battery that um, we are typically looking at as something safer than an outlet, uh, that is not the case. If you short two wires uh, on your battery terminals together, it will immediately melt whatever it is touching. Um, not something you wanna get involved with if you're not knowledgeable in this stuff. So, you know, looking back to where I was before, it's, it's awesome that I learned a lot and that I was able to uh, get the system complete, but I do not recommend that anybody do this. It's extremely dangerous. So before you even get started wiring anything or buying any components, uh, you really want to document what your electrical system is gonna look like and you wanna come up with a diagram um, showing how those wires are gonna be in interconnected, what hardware is gonna be used to get an idea of whether or not what you want to do is feasible. I'm gonna go ahead and put my electrical diagram on the screen and uh, give you guys an idea of what my electrical system is gonna look like. It's fairly beefy, um, I'd say slightly above average for a van of this size, but I really wanted to live in this thing full time and not have to worry about electricity for the vast majority of my needs. Obviously, I'm not gonna be in here running an air conditioner 24 seven, um, but for most things that I consider necessities, my electrical system is gonna be beefy enough to do just fine. Um, those include 24 hour refrigeration, no problem, uh, using my fan for 24 hours if I wanted to, using my heater for 24 hours, using my lights all the time, plugging in my laptop, um, and I'm even thinking about getting a gaming laptop and using that because I am a gamer. Um, that takes a quite a bit of power. I'm gonna have a water pump, a water heater. Um, the water heater takes quite a bit of energy. I mean, I have a, a 2000 watt inverter, so anything like a, like a coffee maker or a uh, hot water heater, I'm gonna be able to power off of AC, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, so here I have my entire electrical system. Um, and the diagram that represents it. So I'm going to quickly scroll through the whole thing so that you can pause it and reference it later in time here. Um, but essentially what we have here is everything at the top is power coming into the system. And then we have the storage, uh, the batteries essentially. And then underneath that, we have all of the output of the system. So all of the appliances, um, 12 volt peripherals and stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna go over this very briefly. If you do want to see a detailed description of this electrical diagram, um, put a comment below requesting that and I'll go ahead and make a separate video. So anyways, we have our solar system here. I have 300 watt solar panels on the roof. There's another video on my channel installing that, um, which you can take a look at. That has a inline fuse into the solar controller, into a breaker going into the system. Um, I have an alternator system that essentially charges the house batteries from the car batteries using a Renergy DC to DC charger. Um, that's not in this video, I, didn't, I haven't actually done this yet, but that's coming in the future. Um, the battery system itself, I have 400 amp hour batteries, uh, all fused on the positive terminals. Um, there's a switch coming directly from the batteries onto the bus bars, preventing all current flowing in and out from the batteries. Uh, from flowing if I turn it to, to the off position. I have a Victron battery monitor, um, which essentially just connects to the negative side of the shunt there. And on this side of the system, I have my 12 volt fuse block with all of my 12 volt accessories here. And on this side of the output, I have my 120 volt alternating current system um, with a 2000 watt inverter charger a panel Trotics AC breaker box and all of my AC peripherals. All right, enough with the boring stuff. Let's get into the fun part, the installation of the electrical system. 
All right, so after you've finished your diagram, the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is figure out where your wires are gonna be routed throughout the van. Um, you don't need to figure out every single wire and where every single wire is gonna be routed, but you need to figure out where the wire highways are going to go. All right, so it took me pretty much all day, but I finally drilled the holes that's gonna provide the channel for the main wiring. So there are a couple of wire highways or channels that all of my wires get distributed through in the van. Uh, the first one is on this side. It is all of the wires that are essentially gonna be in the kitchen galley as well as eventually in the water system that I have back there. So it um, comes out of the galley right here, which is right behind the fridge. There was barely enough room. And it just goes up behind this panel here. It comes up and up and up. And then I drilled a hole um, downwards behind this panel, you can't see it, and I stuck this corrugation through. The wires go up and over the roof, and then back down this wire highway that has a uh, similar hole drilled right here, goes down this behind this panel right here, pops out, and then goes into the main electrical cabin. So that's how um, all of my wires are routed. Some advice that I have is whenever you drill holes into the sides of your van or into the sheet metal, Make sure to tape off the lowest part of uh, wherever you can to catch the metal shavings. I drilled a hole up here in that cavity and the metal shavings fell all the way down into right here and look how many metal shavings I caught. This is like a substantial amount of shavings here. Um, trying to pull it off real slow here so it doesn't go scattering back into the bottom of the van, but look at that. All that would just sit in the bottom of the van and rust if I didn't catch it with this tape here. So one of the most important safety requirement wires or just electrical connections in general is your ground terminal. Um, you need to make sure to ground the negative post of your battery to the chassis of your van. All right, so to make your chassis ground, you need to drill a hole in the chassis. I drilled a hole directly behind where my bench seat is sitting here. And what I did is I, I made a 5 16 18 hole uh, for a 5 16 18 bolt. Um, and I just put a washer on either side. And you want to make sure to sand down um, the surfaces that are going to be in contact with the electricity. I used a little Dremel to sand down the metal and it gave me a really nice finish. You can see how shiny it is. There's obviously no coating, that's just bare steel, which is exactly what you want to get the best connection with the chassis. And then once you do that, you can take your ground wire and simply connect it to the bolt, put your metal nut on top of that, and you have a solid ground connection for a big old two watt wire up to 200 amps. First thing that you need to wire is obviously the batteries. You probably have either a set of 12 volt or 24 volt batteries. Either way, you're gonna to wanna to wire them all in parallel so that you maintain the same voltage while increasing the capacity of the battery bank. All right, so I just learned my very first lesson um, in safety and why it's so important when dealing with electrical stuff. Um, and that is because, especially with the battery cables, you're dealing with a massive amount of current. Um, I accidentally dropped one of the two watt cables while I was trying to connect the batteries together. And even though it was only in contact for about a fraction of a second, it immediately melted the tip of this bolt here. So um, thankfully I, my hand wasn't in the way or anything. And I, you know, my initial reaction was just to throw the wire as, hard, as far as I can immediately. Um, so it didn't touch for long enough to do any damage or thankfully didn't weld itself to a short circuit um, causing a massive fire. But you wanna be very careful when plugging your batteries together. That little short circuit event inspired me to take a couple days and wait for these terminal fuses to come in before I did any more battery wiring. As you can see, I have big two aug, um, two gauge cabling in between all the batteries here and they're all wired in parallel currently. But in between each positive, there is a 200 amp terminal fuse that would essentially blow if this wire happened to touch the tip of this fused terminal um, as it did before when I accidentally dropped it. So um, highly recommend these things. They're kind of kind of pricey, 20, 30 bucks a piece, but uh, they could prevent essentially massive electrical fires inside your van. So I'd say that is highly worth it. This whole battery bank is in parallel. It goes directly 
from the battery bank to a 200 amp breaker into a switch and then onto the positive bus bar there. It's now time to move on to the first couple of auxiliary components. For me, that's gonna be this Blue C 12 volt fuse box. Uh, I'm gonna put this guy somewhere about right here. And that's where all my 12 volt components are gonna connect to. In order to get my 12 volt fuse panel installed, I actually had to use this four gauge foot wire, which I bought in a spool. And um, since I bought it in a spool, it obviously didn't come with connectors on the end that I could use to connect to the bus bar. So what I had to do is crimp the ends of the wire myself with these lugs and then heat shrink them on my own. So um, it's actually pretty easy to do that. Uh, it took me a while to figure out what tools I needed, so I'll share them with you guys. Uh, the first thing is this little anvil crimper that allows you to crimp large gauge wire. This, something like this isn't gonna work unless you buy a really expensive one. Um, this only goes down to 10 gauge wire and this is four gauge wire, massive difference. So what you do is you essentially grab one of these guys, you put it in the anvil crimper and then you just take a couple of whacks at this thing with a hammer, like pretty solid wax. Um, and that will allow the crimp to be very solid. It's uh, very secure on there. It's hard to pull off even if you try. Um, and then you wanna go ahead and buy some heat shrink. This is 3X heat shrink. I don't know how else to explain it. It, it shrinks three times its size uh, in the direction that you want it to. And you gotta just make sure to get the heat shrink to the same diameter as the wire that you're buying. Um, you can buy these things pre-cut and pre-crimped, but in order to do that, you need to know the, uh, the dimensions of this wire, so you need to know how long for them to cut it. I didn't know that going into this, so I just decided to buy a spool and do it myself on the fly, and it worked out pretty well. This is about 25 bucks. I'll put a link to this in the description below. And uh, to, to uh, heat shrink this stuff, I just used a little butane heat gun, but you could honestly use anything, probably a hairdryer, a lighter, something like that. Um, highly recommend doing this yourself unless you already know all the exact distances that you need for these wires to get run. So uh, yeah, just a little tip for you guys. And let's get on to the 12 fold fuse box. All right guys, so we have our 12 volt fuse box installed right here. Um, we also have it behind a 100 amp fuse, which is right down there at the bottom. Um, it essentially attaches directly to the positive bus bar, goes into the fuse block, and then goes back through the negative bus bar, which is grounded um, and connected to the battery bank. So it gets power when this switch is turned to on and it loses power when this switch is turned off or when this fuse blows. This is actually a breaker, not a fuse, so it's resettable. So the very first electrical component we're gonna connect here is the Max Air Fan. Um, today is a perfect day to get this Max Air Fan working because it's over 100 degrees outside and I am sweating balls right now. Yeehaw, brothers, we now have power. Time to connect the solar controller. I got both the solar charger and the battery monitor hooked up here. Um, the solar charger looks quite confusing. It's really not that confusing. Um, it has a positive and a negative going towards the battery, which I obviously fused um, with a 30 amp breaker there, which is the same amperage as uh, the solar controller. And then it has a positive and negative from the panels themselves that comes up from the roof there. So um, those essentially just go back down here into the battery where they get routed. And then the battery monitor only has one cable attached to it. It's a data cable. And that comes from the shunt here. So the shunt needs to be connected to the positive of uh, the battery. And then it needs to intercept between the negative bus bar and the battery. So the shunt has to be the very last thing in the circuit here, which it is. Um, and it's reading 13.7 volts. If I look up my phone here, I can see the wattage of the solar panels, how much they're giving me right now, which is 120. Um, it could be getting throttled because the batteries are pretty full. And then I can also check out the battery monitor on my phone here. Um, it looks like it's showing 100% state of charge. Um, it's They're currently drawing 8.5 amps, which I believe they're actually gaining 8.5 amps from the solar controller here. Um, and yeah, everything's hooked up and ready to go. So now on to the fun part and hooking up some more peripherals. All right, guys, we got a couple of new things installed here. First of all, the Wii Boost, uh, which is awesome. It actually works pretty well. Um, when I hold my, my cell phone close to the internal antenna, I get about double the cell reception that I normally do, which is better than I was expecting. And uh, 
Yeah, pretty stoked about that. The uh, WeBoost is actually routed through the switch, which is pretty cool. Second thing is our fridge. And it's keeping things cool. I got my first couple drinks in here just to make sure that it's not getting too cool, but um, it's definitely nice and frosty in there. Right now I'm just doing DC, so. Um, 12 volt DC stuff is all connected to this fuse box right here. It's super easy. Uh, you just pick the fuse that has the right amperage that you want and things are good to go. All right, so I'm pretty stoked about this. I got the dimmer switch hooked up to the lights. We're in action, baby. Lights are good to go. All right guys, so most of the DC stuff is all wired up and ready to go. Um, it is now time to move on to all of our AC applications using this beefy 2200 watt inverter charger here. Um, essentially what I'm gonna do is wire this directly up to the uh, positive and negative bus bars as well as the ground. Um, and then the AC output is gonna power things like our 110 volt outlets, as well as a microwave and an AC water heater eventually. Um, so let's go ahead and get started wiring this guy. So as far as wiring goes, um, AC is actually pretty similar to DC. If you look at our DC system, the fuse box here connects directly to, to the uh, positive and negative bus bars from the batteries. And the fuse box has all of our DC appliances there. You can see the fan, um, the Wii Boost, cell phone signal booster, the lights, the fridge, all that stuff is just connected to this uh, fuse box here where you can put individual fuses to um, protect all of your DC appliances. The same thing goes for AC. Um, so everything's gonna go directly from the output of the inverter over to this uh, 110 volt AC fuse box. Um, and all of the wires are gonna run from this to their AC appliances. So. The biggest difference with AC is that you have three wires instead of two. Um, instead of a positive and a negative, you have a hot, a neutral, and a ground. Um, I highly recommend watching um, videos on how AC power works in general, just so you have a good idea of what AC power is and why it's different than DC power. That's really gonna help you understand um, how to kind of check your circuit and fix things that aren't working, um, rather than just trying to fix them because a fix that fixes something without you knowing how it works is almost as bad as not fixing it at all. Alrighty, I uh, just got this Samlux inverter charger hooked up. It is quite a beefy boy. Um, it is hooked directly to the batteries with three wires. Um, a negative wire that goes to the negative bus bar, a positive wire that goes into a 200 amp fuse and then the positive bus bar, and then an additional ground wire hooks directly to this middle chassis in case there's any um, ground faults to prevent from massive fires erupting. So um, it works. Moment of truth, if I turn it on, it outputs 120 volts AC. It is a little noisy. Like I wasn't expecting it to make this much noise, but uh, it'll power all the stuff that I need it to. So at the end of the day, it's probably worth it. So it's pretty hard to see in here, but um, our first AC appliance is hooked up and ready to go. The first one that I hooked up in here is the outlet. So that's the bottom green indicator there, the one that I just turned off. Um, and that corresponds to this outlet right here, which I currently have this vacuum cleaner plugged into. And when I turn the vacuum cleaner on, there she goes. So there we have it. That is the electrical system. Um, everything is all wired up. We have two sources of energy. We have the 12 volt DC system and then we have the 120 volt AC system. Um, everything is hooked through multiple layers of fuses. I mean, by the time that you get out to things like the lights and the fridge and any other peripherals, there are two or three layers of fuses and breakers preventing those things from um, overheating, preventing wires from melting. So I try to make this system extremely safe. We have our four 100 amp hour batteries in there, totaling 400 amp hours. We have bus bars, which link to the 120 volt fuse box and the 12 volt fuse box. Um, we have breakers in between everything on all of the larger wires, as you can see down there. Here is the result of our panel that uh, we actually are going to be interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it has the Samlex inverter controller here where it, that can be used to turn the inverter on and off. 
and also get additional data on it. We have the Wii Boost, um, which boosts my cell phone signal when I turn that thing on. We have the Max Fan Controller. We have our solar charger, we have our battery monitor, and we have some switches for applications, um, some of which are wired up, others are just placeholders. So all in all, I'm very stoked with how this electrical system came out. In fact, I am very stoked to be alive. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was definitely a challenge learning all of this and putting all these parts together, but in the end, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I mean, we have all the essentials in the van now, the fridge, the lights, and uh, some other fun stuff. So. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Um, if you hit the subscribe button, make sure to also hit that notifications bell on the right to customize your notifications so that you don't miss any future updates to the van. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.